So moving away from psychotropics and psychopharmacology and uh, thinking about other things that I think are going to be driving us and I believe should drive us in the future, let's take the example of global climate change. Up until now, if you believe, and, and with the new administration in Washington, we now believe that, that there was a human element that's driving climate change. Um, so that is now the official uh, belief of the government. It wasn't before. Um, if you believe, as I do, that that is true, what we have done in the past is try and figure out how to make that better, how to mitigate climate change. However, some people who think about this um, um, very seriously, and, and this is an article that just came out last week in Journal of the American Medical Association, the International Response to Climate Change, um, argue, and I believe this is true, that if we just put all our eggs in trying to make it better, we're barely going to keep our heads above water. Hopefully that's a figurative analogy, not a literal one. Um, and we need to start looking at how we affect behaviors to prevent, not to mitigate, the kind of thing that lead to large-scale uh, climate change. That's going to require the assistance of people with expertise in psychological science. We know how to change attitudes and behaviors in individuals and in societies. What's the best example of the application of psychological science to prevention that anybody can think of? Two of them come immediately to mind. Studied extensively by, by some psychologists, a fellow named Paul Carroll, by the way, he was at Arizona State. What do you do when you get in the car? What's the first thing you do when you get in the car? You put on a seatbelt. 30 years ago, 70% of you wouldn't have done that. Okay. Where do you go in San Francisco when you want to smoke a cigarette? Outside the city limits, it turns out they want to ban smoking entirely in the city of San Francisco. You can't go any place and have a smoke. Um, again, application of principles, large-scale behavior change to um, public policy problems. Two very successful examples. But as Wiley in this article said, Relationship between climate change and global health is unmistakable. It is a critical time for public health advocates to demand that political leaders not only safeguard the health of the world's population, but we need to particularly focus on survival needs of most disadvantaged populations. If you were to go to Washington, D.C. Sorry, I forgot to turn this off. If you were going to go to Washington, D.C. and sit in the Pentagon, and listen to military planners talk about future risks. What do you think they talk about? Nuclear threats in North Korea and Iran? Yeah. What else do they talk about? Social instability in Africa because they're losing maybe a quarter of their population due to the AIDS pandemic there. And how that destabilizes governments and creates a tremendous security risk. Okay. Other things they talk about? large-scale climate change and how that creates social instability and tremendous security risks. So don't think that there aren't a lot of very smart people uh, in national security agencies who are trying to figure out and mitigate the effects of these. Guess who works with those people in those settings? Psychologists do. Okay? And that's a definite career opportunity and a path that I hope that some of our students take advantage of.